The Iron Game Chalk Talk Podcast is brought to you by the following sponsors. EliteForm.com, IgnitionAPG.com, PlayUSA at PLAEUSA.com, and Soranex Exercise Equipment at Soranex.com. And now, the Iron Game Chalk Talk Podcast. Welcome to Iron Game Chalk Talk with your host, Ron McKeefer. Every time our athletes walk into this weight room, they're going to be pushed to the max. Let's go! Let's go! Everything you got! On this podcast, hear Coach McKeefer's straight talk about training, featuring the top strength and conditioning professionals from around the world. And now, here's your host, Ron McKeefer. Hey guys, welcome back to Iron Game Chalk Talk. I'm your host, Rob McKeefrey, and this is episode number 115. Iron Game Chalk Talk is a weekly podcast where I bring you experts in the field of talk shop. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to us on iTunes or YouTube or join the mailing list at robmckeefrey.com to stay up to date with the latest guests and anything else that I have going on. This week, super excited to have Doug Smith with us. Doug is the head strength coach at Junietta College. And uh, you saw him win the NSCA College Strength Coach of the Year this year at the Coaches Conference. Uh, he puts on a fantastic clinic every year with Hammer Strength and Lawn Record and all the great things that they're doing. And, and uh, want to make sure that he recognizes uh, Lon's efforts and, and, and help him make sure, and Hammer's efforts, help him make sure that's a great event. But we get into that. We get into the conference. We get into being kind of a one-man band at, at, at a small school. Uh, how he's made the big time where he's at, you know, something we talk about quite a bit on this show, and uh, lots of other topics. And I know, I know you're going to get a ton out of this episode. Before we do, we want to make sure we recognize all of our sponsors: Sornex.com, EliteForm.com, PlayUSA.com, and of course Ignition APG. And you know, this time of year is always a fantastic time, uh, especially if you're following Ignition on Facebook or Twitter, and uh, just seeing all the cool things that they're doing the success that they're having. They, they work with several NFL players uh, and, you know, training camps and things like that. But what's really cool to see is not just the successes they're having on the field, but the success and the, and the, the impact that they're making in their communities uh, all across the country. And so um, it's direct reflection of their mission is, you know, training the mind, body, and spirit and um, just do a fantastic job. But make sure you check them out on Facebook, Twitter, um, you know, they have several products, one of which is the Protein XO uh, formula and uh, just a great tasting product. And if you're in a situation where you can give protein powder, um, that's definitely something you should check out, get samples of, reach out to them. But, um, you know, they're, 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 their parent company is Prasco, and um, they just, they you know, it's a pharmaceutical company, so you can definitely rest assured that it's, informed cho- choice and informed sport and certified and all those types of things. So uh, make sure you check out Ignition APG. Lastly, you know, before we get to the episode, finally got my ep- my proof copies from the publisher of the CEO Strength Coach, a book that I've been working on for uh, about eight months now and uh, should be releasing soon, hopefully by the 1st of September. And, uh, you know, it's so cool. You know, I set a goal back 13, you know, when I was 13 years old, uh, you know, with a whole list of other things to try to accomplish. And, and one of those was writing a book. And uh, so gratifying to get a copy of, of a book that you wrote in the mail and, and just seeing it for the first time. There's really kind of lots of emotions that go along with that. But um, I put a lot of time and effort into this. There's, um, you know, it's definitely something I think that is missing, you know, in the market right now. Uh, it's not your typical X's and O's book, you know, and sets and reps. It's really kind of the business of strength conditioning and how you can become a success uh, there. And, and success is defined by you. But, you know, we talk a lot about, you know, on the show, we talk a lot about becoming a great technician, a great manager, and a great entrepreneur. And so I use examples of my, you know, my, in my career of how to develop those, those skills and, and, you know, lots of feedback and input from other sources. But... I uh, really think you're going to get a ton out of it. Hope to to get it in your hands soon. And, and uh, be make sure you're following me on Facebook and Twitter and all those things so that way I can keep you updated as to when it releases. But just in time, hopefully, for all those plane trips and those bus rides and, and things like that where you can throw it in your bag and, and take it with you. But uh, real excited. Can't wait for you guys to see it. 
and um, you know, I think it's going to be something that's uh, impactful. So uh, appreciate it. Looking forward to this episode. Know you're going to get a ton out of it. We'll see you on the other side. Take care. All right, guys, excited to have Doug Smith with us. If you were at the NSCA uh, Coaches Clinic, you saw Doug get the Strength Coach of the Year Award. And, and uh, just a guy that I, you know, we haven't had a chance to really get to know each other well prior to this, but, um, you know, I've respected so much from afar. And so, Doug, I, I really, truly appreciate you coming on the show and sharing today. Well, I really appreciate you having me on here. I really do. This is a, this is an honor. I know a lot about you. Uh, I know especially uh, – been a lot of places, but you know, I spent some time in Tennessee. So yeah. just, uh, I don't know if that was a good or bad experience there. But oh, I was awesome. Way, way back, sneaking into Gibbs Hall. I don't know if they still have Gibbs Hall there. You know, sneaking in the weight room there, and, uh, <laughs> and uh, should have been spending more time sneaking in and talking to the strength coaches instead of trying to pump weight. But uh, <laughs> that was a long, long time, ago. long time. Ago. No, it's a fantastic place, and and uh, I enjoyed it a lot, but. Well, Doug, you know, I mean, let's get into that a little bit. Let's let's talk a little bit about your journey. What what kind of got you into the field, and and then you know some stops along the way that have led you to Juniata. Well, I tell you, I, I probably like a lot of coaches. I I, I I got involved with strength and conditioning through athletics. You know, I played athletics, and uh, yeah, you really didn't have no choice as a young person. Uh, fortunately, I really lo- I love the weight room. I love the weight room, and it's, I've always had that, that that feel that, you know, I, I love the preparation as, as much as the season, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? And I try to push that on the kids. I mean, I always felt, you know, I, was, I wasn't genetically a freak by any means, and so I had, to, I had to push myself to develop myself as much as possible just to get out there and, and, and play. And uh, it gets to be, a, it gets to be a, a, an addiction to the grind, and, and it's always been that way, and I uh, and that's that's the way it's been. I, I originally from Florida, and you know, I'm not a young guy anymore. But you know, back in the I, I, I was in the, I was in, you know started in '69, uh, '70, getting in the weight room. And uh, fortunately, I mean, I'm not going to talk about doing uh, jumps over, over benches on hard concrete of uh, as many reps as you could do. I mean, I've learned a lot there by doing <laughs> things the wrong way and. and <laughs> you know, learning doing things the wrong way is probably the value of doing it the right way. So I have a lot of experience, but I was fortunate enough to have a coach at the time that did teach me intensity. And he understood about the intensity and the, 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 just a, a, a work work ethic. So that was Absolutely. one thing I got out of that. You know, after that, going to college and everything. I mean, um, you know, I just you know, I. I, I I ended up there at Mirable College, actually. I played there at Mirable College outside of Knoxville. And uh, I finished up my uh, eligibility there. And then I ended up going up with a team up in uh, West Virginia. It was AFAC. It was a, a semi-pro team right before the, uh, what was it, league come in way, way, way back there. But uh, but uh, played all over. It was a lot of fun. And I said, you know, why not go ahead and finish my degree? So I went to uh, West Virginia State. Mm-hmm. Finished my degree up there and ended up, uh, you know, uh, coaching high school ball up there a couple years. And my main focus was basically strength. The strength I did was the power. I'm a power lifting coach here. That's awesome. A football team and a baseball team and coach baseball. Uh, that's 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 how I really got started right there. And then I went back to West Virginia State. I, I coached football there, and the, my, my main duty was I was the only strength and conditioning coach I had there, so I, I worked there for a while. Um, you know, got away from it a little bit. I'll come back up here uh, to head to work because my family's originally from Pennsylvania. I was visiting. I saw an ad in the paper about a uh, football coach again. Got in, and my, I took over with the strength and conditioning, and that's where I ended up being strength and conditioning, strength and conditioning. Stayed here a couple of years with the Lock Haven University. Uh, was up there a couple of years, strength and conditioning coach for the football team there. Uh, when I was up there, I tried to get as many. I'm real fortunate at the time. I was at the time, you know, there's not there wasn't as much, you know, with the internet and everything right now. You know, all the internships and this, but you didn't know nothing back then. So, right. But, but I, was real, I understood I needed to get to some, some places and learn. So, I. Um, I went. Uh, I went over. I talked to. Uh, I went down to Richmond. I was down there for part of the summer. Worked with their program down there. 
Uh, next year, I went to a totally different program. I went in the summer. I went to Penn State, and that was when JT was there, and it was a high intensity program. Learned a lot there, actually. Absolutely. High intensity is high intensity. But I'll tell you what. What an amazing man he was, as far as attention to detail. I mean, I really understand. I probably had I, I, being around him was probably so much learning about intense uh, intensity and attention to detail, doing things correctly. Absolutely, it, it's anywhere I've been, and I think that's that stuck with me. That's really stuck with me. Uh, after that, I come back here to uh, Junietta College. They they put in a new weight facility here. It was the first one. They were sort of like a lot of small colleges. They just had a little room in the in the back, and they put in a, a, a real nice facility. Uh, it was probably geared for athletes, but more for a community. So it took me a while, but it sort of changed over. We're like 10,500 square feet right now. In fact, right now, I can smell paint on my side because we're knocking down walls down there and we're increasing, uh, putting an extra 600 square feet in. And oh, that's we're, great. We're going to have so. so uh, and, and I just was real fortunate to plan. Good, good place, good place to raise a family. Great place to work. Uh, great athletic director. Uh, two athletic directors, great. And uh, sounds like a recruiting talk right there, but it, it, it's been real good. So I've got home here. And uh, I'm just, it's been great. Well, you got to be. Oh, go, go ahead. Go, go ahead. I was just going to say I you got to. I was going to have anything to say. I got on this camera. It was a little bit intimidating. Now I want to <laughs> sit here and talk. No, this is awesome. <laughs> but, uh, I think that's a great. I mean, I, you know, so many times, and, and, and people on the show, they, they, they've heard me say this so many times, is, is um, you know, everybody's always looking for the grass is greener. You know, that they, they, they're not stopping and really appreciating the place that they work at and really soak it in. And. It's refreshing to hear somebody that, that like you said, I mean, it's not, it sounds like recruiting speech, but that's what you live every single day. That's what you believe. And so because of that, you believe, you, you make the big time where you are, you know, and, and, uh, and you've enjoyed uh, uh, however many years, 12 plus years, or, you know, uh, you know, well, this second stint is 12 plus years. Yeah, 12 um, plus, but, for, you know, on and off for 17, 18 years. But, yeah. Uh, but I'll tell you what it is, too, you know, I've been, I've been fortunate in a way, too, you know, uh, and, you know, when you have a family, it's, it's nice to keep family in one spot. But the other thing, too, I mean, you're in a whole different situation because no matter how good a job you're doing, uh, you know, you pretty much depends on how the wins and losses, baby. record. Yeah, so, wins and losses. You, know, you don't have a lot of, sometimes, you know, right. you don't have a lot of choice to make those moves. That's not how it's been here with me. And like I said, we our football program is, is, is great to work with. It's getting better. Uh, we have a great Olympic side. I mean, we have well, I've been involved with. Should have been more. <laughs> shouldn't have put that on tape either. But, <laughs> been more, but we we have about eight national championships with, with our men's and women's volleyball. I've never been involved with the program. Played Division One volleyball and Division Three at the same time. And then when they went, did they change the NCA? Picked them up. They went Division Three, but. We have tremendous uh, on the Olympic side of uh, our basketball programs and stuff. I mean, it, it's been very, very enjoyable. It's been very, very enjoyable. So, yeah, so that's that's why I'm here. And, uh, and, and the other thing is, I, you know, sometimes you, you, your ego can override your butt, you know what I mean? And, and, and I, it never happened with me because I, you know, I realized I was fortunate enough to be here. I wasn't probably as remarkable as someone but guys, you're used to dealing with it. I sure. still felt like I was close enough to it because I got involved with the strength and conditioning clinic up here. So now I'm meeting guys that are, are coming in here and they're speaking from all over. And, and I and, and network sometimes, you know, we're, I developed a network and a sense of friendship. And, right. And, and you got to meet these guys. And, and that's been going on now for, uh, I think we had our 15th, 16th year of clinic 15 years and 16 years of clinics 15 years of clinics you know this past wow. year so wow bring them in about uh, you know 40 40 speakers at a time and but they're all great guys and, and some of the been coming back it's almost like family family group right there so yeah yeah a little bit too so well i want to come back to that because it's definitely something i want to i want to talk about is that clinic but um you know one thing i think you know that we should touch on a little bit is you know, even though it's a fantastic place, you know, I'm sure there's been times, you know, there's, you know, in, in 13, 14, 17 years, whatever, you know, 
there's been times where it's been rocky and it's been, you know, you're, like you said, your ego's gotten, you know, you're, I mean, you're the college strength coach of the year. So you've had opportunities to leave. You're, you're a one man band there, things along those lines. What are some of the biggest challenges that you've had there? Um, and, and what kind of advice would you give young coaches and, that are, are coaches that are in similar type situations to say, you know what, I'm going to stay here for a significant amount of time? Well, uh, you know, everybody has their fit. Uh, the biggest challenge is here is, you know, we talked a little bit, about it a little bit earlier, but, you know, we, we do have 17 teams, okay, and varsity teams, and, and that's a lot of athletes right there. And, and it, it is a true juggling act. I mean, time management, logistics with, with the, the, the equipment we have, we, got, we, got, we have a lot of, now we have some nice, by the way, I got to say this, we have a Mr. Brumball that, that and, and a man gives us, he built the program, we get, we, we get our fair share of money every year. They're doing the whole thing right now with another Mr. Uh, Anderson, and, and uh, we have the equipment. We have the equipment, so we're very fortunate in that, but we don't sometimes have the space, and we don't have the time. So I'm juggling different teams, like say, in season, off season, I mean, uh, preseason, postseason, that's how it goes up until the summer. And right. The summer orders go ahead, and we have the workouts for them, we cut them loose, and we monitor what they do at a far with, except a couple of kids that are on campus. And that, you know, but uh, but it, it juggling, juggling the team. So I might have a, you know two, three. Well, I will have two, three teams in at a time, and I have a helper which is is is, is classified as an intern, and you know an intern that's working forty five, fifty hours. Yeah, oh yeah. You know I mean? <laughs> We've all been so, there. And, and doing a, have a heck of a job, but uh, so uh, that's a big thing right there. So uh, we have our different spaces. It's not just in the in the main way. We have different spaces that we take as far as, you know, we're doing our shoulder maintenance program here, our core program over here. We're doing something falcon over here with our tires and our sledgehammer, or our ropes over here. We'll take our, our, the best running place we have is our science. We're a big science school. Well, we have the best building we have on campus, the highest stairwell we have is our is Von Levy. And we take <laughs> over there and, hey, we run them with, at, at appropriate times, we'll sure. run with sandbags and, and, and we'll do sandbag runs over there. We'll do stair workouts over there. We use our sand pits out on the, our, 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 our jumping sand pits outside. We use we use every part of the, of the campus. The school, the yeah. So, so saying that, sometimes yeah, I think the neat thing is you you we, you develop your programs as you need to do that. But you have to use your imagination. You have to use your imagination. And as your programs develop, they start progressing. But you know, a lot of good things can be junk if they're not put together. So we're trying to put, you know, that's hard to coordinate. On. That's why you strength and conditioning coordinate. You know, you're not just picking this, picking that. And Absolutely. Sort of trying to coordinate with the, with the, you know, the, the teams and, the, and, the, and then right down to the individuals. So, you know, how is it? I mean, you're, you're this communication with, with us, the coach, the athlete, the athlete training staff, and your, 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 your sports-specific program, your position specific program, then you take right down to the freaking needs of the kid, you know. What right. I mean? so, and, and we tr- we try to do that as much as possible. So. No, it's, yeah, absolutely, and I think that that's, you know, I want to kind of d- dive into that a little bit more. I mean, it sounds like, you know, you have a lift time, and there may be two or three sports at that time, and and you're setting up different sections for them to kind of rotate between is that how you kind of set yeah we might we might have well sometimes we might have one team that we, we just have them on our platforms okay we have, we do a platform list to start them off that we'll, we'll do our pre our pre-workouts you know we we'll do some ladder work warm them up bring them and then, then we have a, a, a basically it's a i i've sort of got a, a warm up a, a lead up program that's also reinforces a warm-up lead up that reinforces well, we'll start off with basically the overhead squat with the dial pan. Then we'll go ahead and we'll do a, a, a um, we'll do a um, a front squat with, with just the bar, and we're doing that just to reinforce the catch position. Right. Then we we'll go ahead and we, we, we do a, a I call a, a triple extension under the bar exercise that transition from the high pull to 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 the catch, and then we'll take them over and, and run them, take them over to the brushing hand glutes and let them activate the muscles. Mm-hmm. Okay. And we bring them back and start doing our work sets. 
So I'm doing that with this team here, but we might have another team in, in, in the uh, power acts that they're doing squats and stuff earlier. Sometimes I have two teams that are, are doing clean. I might have the football team that's doing power with cleans on the floor on the, on the, on the platforms, and I might have the, 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 by the way, women are fantastic cleaners if they're, you know what I mean? But we have a women's volleyball or basketball team. They might be in the, uh, they might be in the, in the, the power racks doing hand cleans. Mm -hmm. so, and now we're switching things around, switching things around, and we might have another team that I, I put somebody with which we have to prescribe uh, a shoulder program with our dumbbell work maybe up in one, one of our other areas. Now that dumbbell work could be, it could be a strength day with the, with the shoulders, it could be a recovery day with the shoulders. Right. Be, I mean, we just have so many, you know, and again, that all depends on what season they're in. You know? Sure, sure. And the communication part too, because sometimes we, you know, we, we have, I have to work as I know exactly where I want to go. I mean, I know how to get, from, I want to go from here to work to cook and sometimes the floods are going to take you around. Yep. Wraps and stuff. So those floods, a lot of times, just depends on the communication of, of with the coaches, what the practices were like, or, or where the kids were at. As far as, I mean, we might have a hard day prescribed for them, and we end up doing, going, taking them in there, and going, "Hey, we're just we're just gonna, you know, we're gonna do a more a high low a high rep with with lower weights just to do a recovery workout." Right. So we might just throw the whole thing out and take them to the swimming pool to do a swimming pool workout, which is. That, that's a heck of a Sometimes that can be one, that's a serious workout right there, or it can be a recovery workout. So right. a lot of times it's just communicate back and forth with, with the players and the coaches. And, Absolutely. And that, so. when, I, when I was in South Florida, we had a, you know, we had a 2,000 square foot weight room, and, and it was me and another guy, and that, that was it for our entire our campus. And so I know in that setting, you know, you have to you have to be extremely creative. You have to you have to have lots of tools in the toolbox because you might not have, you know, twenty platforms. You know, you might yeah. you have to be able to integrate lots of different philosophies, lots of different programming and tools, things along those lines. But more importantly, you know, in that type of environment with limited coaches or limited equipment or limited space, whatever you say, um, the culture that you you create in terms of accountability because you you only have one set of eyes. How do you go about creating a, a level of accountability with your athletes um, what, to where they do what you ask them to do when you're not watching? What coach, it's, it's, it's like this, the good ones, that's, 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 a, that's a test right there. If you're, you're out, you can look and see if they're doing their, their, their pre, you know, their, their warm-ups, dynamic warm-ups, whatever you want to do before, and if they're attention to detail. I mean, we bring so many kids in and they're, they're not flexible reason they're not flexible is because they just went through motions and they, they, they didn't they didn't take they didn't mean anything to them and sure. so that's what we're always trying to work if we do it we're doing it for a reason um, and, and again this gets in philosophy sometimes it can be a bad work but you know it's, it's implementing what philosophy I think what's important teaching it but but uh, for our philosophy at least mine is this uh, we want to make we want to make better athletes in the sense we want them to be able to communicate with each other. When the, when our athletes our athletes don't teach each other how to but they critique each other's this. So we got three guys in the, in the, in the squat rack and, and we got our, our squat bars up we got one guy squat spotting and we, of course we teach our spot and safety stuff. But we there should be one or two other people there watching. I mean and they, they I mean they're watching weight distribution. They can they can watch these kids better know they're looking at the heels where the hips are and where the hips are where the knees are and understand that I mean we teach we, we teach it like that so we do right. get our kids to communicate and, and because we teach it so much we say that's attention to detail we do things correctly every time because if you can't do the, if you can't learn to be coached and do it correctly every time how many times have you been in a film session football and just got your butt spanked and the coaches are saying, you know, I've like, just been five, five plays. Right. A whole different game. Yep. With those five plays, you guys have been pay attention to detail and couldn't be coached. And you know what? They break down. Hey, it changes the whole the whole tone of the game. No doubt. It has to play different because of defense, defense, because maybe somebody can do a cover. So we, you know, to me it's just important that if a, a kid comes in, he works his butt off in there, and then he doesn't put his numbers down. 
Right. It means that attention to detail. Yep. That's somebody who's going to blow the coverage, and that's somebody who's going to make it. That's going to be a factor in the game. So we we, we teach a lot of that. Uh, we said I I believe that everybody. I mean, every year you're looking for your leader to your team. I say everybody's a leader. You all have to talk. You all have to take. You know, you you are the team, and I, I teach a lot of that in there. And I think we can do that. I think that's a great, great place for way from right there. I think that's a great tool, way to use it. And that's what we do, and, and we push it, we push it. But we're real accountable, and, and, and even if you can't see everything, hey, they think you can see everything. Absolutely. So it's it loud in there. <laughs> and you know something else? You probably know this, too. I mean, I know you know this, but when you're sitting there, and because of the, as much time as you spend in the weight room as an athlete, you know, I really, this sounds really cliche, but I can feel you, brother. I mean, when I'm watching somebody in there and I'm saying, hey, yep. I, I, right now, you, hey, where are you feeling that at? I know exactly where you're feeling that. I can see, I can see the, where you, the weight distribution. I can see the way you, you, what your hips are shifting. You're feeling that in your, you're not, feel, you're not feeling that in your hands. You're not feeling that in your glutes. Right. You, you, you weight's too far forward. You feel, and, you know, you, you can see when that knee goes in. They're trying to short stroke and get under the bar because you know, our, our rule is basically, uh, Weight is, is dictated by technique, you know. And we we we're a strength team, but we we're, we're ultimately when we want to get to the bar speed and, and the speed strength and power part of it. But uh, but you know you, you can feel everything. You've been there so so many times, you, you know exactly what they're feeling. And a lot of those feelings come back again from past experience of doing things right, and probably sure. more from having to do them the wrong way. <laughs> so. But, that, but that's 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 a little bit about how it works here. So well, I, I mean, we I, make it fun now. We make it fun. We're hard on the kids. I'm going to tell you something. I'm very very vocal, and I'm very very you know I say it exactly the way it is. But we do, we we're, we probably spend more time being positive and, and complimenting and, and uh, hey, we get excited. If it's good, it's good. If it's wrong, we try to correct it. Right. Well, I tell, I tell you, that's what I mean. It's exactly on point with what we do in terms of, you know, everything is built around the training partner, you know, and, and in our program, you know, we have, you know, we'll start with four guys a rack and it's two and two. It's, you know, it's your training partner and your train, you know, and uh, yeah. it's two groups of, of partners. And so I tell our, our athletes that, you know, my, my training partner in college was one of the, one of the guys that stood up in my wedding. I mean, that's, that's the level of expectation I have for that kind of relationship, you know, and, and that person should have zero problem. It's just like with my brother. I mean, I'm hardest on my brother, you know. It, it, you should have zero problems having a hard conversation or being or holding people accountable um, that you really, truly care about, you know, and, and uh, that constant communication like you're talking. I mean, you can say something, you can say something every rep, and it's easy to point out the bad, but every rep we should be pointing out that's a great rep that's a good job that's fantastic oh, yeah. you know you bet. and you bet. um and getting them talking to each other and that leads into what you're talking about with the leadership part of it i mean i, I tell our guys every single one of them are going to lead their family you know so we need to develop skill sets now that when things get rough later on because they will as, as a as a father as a husband you have to be prepared to be able to handle that type of adversity and what better training what better training environment than the weight room where you walk into the weight room and you get smacked in the face by life every single day? I mean, you have, you have, you have a goal and all of a sudden it's, it, you come in and you're uncomfortable and you have to work together and you have to overcome something and, and, and you do it every single morning. And um, I, I couldn't agree with you more on, on that for sure. We, uh, you mentioned earlier the, the, the strength clinic, and, and it's a fantastic clinic that I, you know, I kick myself every year for not being able to get out to for some reason, and it just seems like every year it's, it's one of those deals where I just, it's not timing up for me. But I know when I, and again, when I was, you know, the places that I've been, I've always put on a clinic, and the, mostly the reason for it has been because I want, I want to continue to learn, and rather than me go see every one of these people, it's a little bit easier to bring them in and, and have a conversation, but you ran a successful one now for 16 years. You know, for the coaches that are that maybe aren't running clinics right now, what are the benefits to them? And, you know, how would you recommend them setting up a clinic from the get-go to, to have, you know, start to have a successful one? Well, the, the benefits of everything you just said is you're learning uh, and you're meeting people. Uh, our clinic is set up in a way that uh, it's – 
we, and I'm not here to advertise a clinic, but what we do, we'll have two, two speakers going at one time, okay? And you have the choice to go. And then we'll go ahead and we'll also have a hands-on. So we have things all over the place. Probably the bad part of our clinic is that you have to choose. Right. You have to miss something. But I set it up like that because I want a lot of different, I want a lot of options. You know, because everybody's looking, everybody just want to come in and talk about speed development, you know, or, sure. or, or a football program. So we, we hit everything. We hit everything. We have physical therapists coming in. We have athlete trainers coming in. We have basketball, uh, uh, baseball, ice hockey, you name it. We have some, a lot of functional type people coming in. So we, we have that, and then we have the, the hands-on. Um, that, that, that makes it a lot of fun right there. And, and then because it's so important, you know, it's just not learning, but we also – Basically, we need to get those CEUs. We need to get those CEUs. So that's what, if I have three people going at once or four groups going at once, and I, I have to get there early in the morning on Friday and I've got to stay to try to get a lot better of possibly 20 hours or 2.0, ever how you, you know. Right. And then, um, so uh, we, we have a lot going on. How did I develop it? Uh, I've been real fortunate with the school here, like a lot of schools, you, you know, you work with camps and conferences and that type of stuff. But, and then we got involved with the different uh, professional organizations, basically with you know, BOC, which is NATA, and also with, start out with NSCA, which is right. fantastic with them right there. Got involved with, with the uh, teachers, I mean, with Act 48 Hours. And right now, because we have a lot of physical, also physical therapists and stuff coming in, and we have you know different sports physicians coming in speaking, we're starting to, to venture out into the with the PT uh, credits too for professional development. But you got to look at your you know the, the crowd you got. You got to bring the speakers in to you know sort of right. you know, to be interested. In. And it, it, it's just a lot of fun. It's just a lot of fun. And, 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 the, and the big part of what we do too is. Not just you're just not going to those clinics, but we have a lot of social get-togethers. Those guys are around, and you're actually getting to know those people. So yeah, that's it's, great. It's, it gets to be a it's, it gets to be a lot of fun. It's really enjoyable. So well, that's a, and like you said, what it what it's doing as the the person that's hosting it. Um, not only are you getting the opportunity to listen to them speak, but you're also developing a relationship to where I'm sure you've picked up the phone a hundred times since meeting somebody and. Talk shop, asked a question, got advice, given well, advice. That, 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 you know. The follow ups, yeah, it gives you, yeah, it helps you with your follow ups and, and you have it, yeah, you bet. That's, okay. that's, that's very, very important. No question. But sometimes when you're hosting, and you, you probably know hosting clinics, yeah. <laughs> you're, like, the, you're lucky to see five minutes of it. And you, then you're running a marathon, running from one thing to the other, and God forgive that something technically goes wrong, like, computer breaks down or something. You have some problems. Uh, no question. You know, a lot of running. So, but uh, yeah, and, uh, you know, social time and, 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 and the follow-up, that, that's fantastic. And, you know, we've been real fortunate. All our, the majority of our speakers come in always, you know, they, they get the email addresses and, and they, you know, it's just an open invitation to give them calls and stuff because they they like to spread the word too. You know, they like to pass on the knowledge. And, Absolutely. It's great. It's great. So. Absolutely. No, that's fantastic. I'd recommend everybody attend as well. Well, you're it, close now, man. You're in East. I know. East I know. East 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 East. And, and, I, and I thought I was going to get there this year. Um, you, need to come in, you need to come think about coming to speak. That's what you need to do. I'd, I'd love to. I'd love to. Yeah. Um, but last year, that's, uh, not to go off on a tangent, but my family is still back in Knoxville, and so I had to go back for a, a an event with my kids, but that's uh, but that's why I missed this year. But I'm going to get there. I promise you. I promise that's, you. That's a, a super. I'll hold you to that. The um, you mentioned, you know, the involvement with the NSCA there um, as part of the clinic as well. But I know, um, you know, and, and, and the people that have watched the show, they know that I, I I can get on my soapbox about this quite a bit. But the you know the fact that you know you're constantly giving back to the NSCA and the community and the profession in a lot of ways. I mean, you speak. You write, you do some research, you, you know, you put on a clinic, all these types of things. And, you know, the common response when I, when I confront people about that is, is that, you know, I don't have time, I don't have this. You found a way, being a one-man band, 
at a school of 17 sports and 500 plus athletes and you know all that to, to give back in, in more ways than than most people are you know could even imagine giving back what are what are some of your tactics what how do you how do you go about um, staying involved and, and and giving back to a profession which I would imagine I, I, you haven't you know you haven't said this but I know you feel it that you've given back to a profession that you feel has given so much to you well I'll be honest with you. I just, uh, it, it's just anything that comes up and I'm asked to do, I, I do it. I do it. And I think we all, that's basically what we all do. I mean, the more involved we get, I mean, the better. I mean, that helps me. I mean, for selfish reasons, that, that helps me. I mean, it's helped me learn. And, and, and I, you know, there's some, a lot of good organizations out there, some great organizations. I know right now there's, you know, it's, but the NSCA has been a real good thing. I mean, I, uh, I, I thought I knew a lot. I, I remember back in ninety. I, I've been a member of the uh, NSCA and stuff. Nineteen ninety one. I went to watch uh, uh, William. Uh, who was it? Hicks. William Kramer. Okay. William Kramer. Yeah, and he was a uh, he was a, I mean, it was a long time ago, and and I was just really impressed. I was impressed. I did. I, I didn't realize how much I did know, and I was just—I was like, "Oh my goodness!" So yeah, I got, and then I got real hungry. So I got involved with that. And I got my uh, CSCS as soon as I could, and um, I just—I just stayed involved with that organization right there. And it, it, it's helped me. It's it, that's helped me so much. I mean, at the at the time, that was—I mean, I think uh, I don't even know if you remember who this was. Our idea of, of strength, strength conditioning, as far as education. Remember, there was a book, Bill Starr. Yeah, it was way back. That was a Bible yeah. in, 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 in our college. I, mean, I Bill have Starr. it. That was that yeah. was way way back. That was in the that was in, way back. So, no, I have it. Well, I remember reading that thing a million times through. The <laughs> NSCA. That was the first. Uh, you know, that, that did help me so much as far as just myself developing the knowledge and sure. that. And, well, and it forced me. I'll tell you what, I, I had my bachelor's degree and I said, you know what? I asked, I said, you know, I'm going to go back and get my master's. So I found a program and went and actually knocked that off and uh, just kept continuing. And uh, it's, it's been a, it's been a lot of fun. It's been a lot of fun. Well, I think that's the, that's the key is that you're going to be as involved as you, you want to be, you know? And, and so if people are, you know, and again, none of us have time. You know, and you, you have to make time, but when you do, um, you get it back tenfold, uh, is my firm belief, and I know it is yours as well. And so I would encourage anybody listening, especially our, the, the older strength coaches, um, we have to do our part, you know, for, you know, and uh, continue to give back to this profession that, that is giving us so much and, and, um, and find whatever way that is. So if you don't like to speak and you have a fear of public speaking, do it, you know, by writing or, you know, hosting a clinic or whatever, but... Um, but I think it's something that we need for us to take a step forward as a profession. That's, we all have to start acting more and more like professionals, you know, and, and, uh, I know you do that in a big, big way, but I know, um, Doug, you're busy and, and I want to get you out of here, but, um, I do always kind of end the show with some resources here. So give us the, the best piece of coaching advice you've ever received. You know, <laughs> Now, I don't know if this is coaching. You know, you know Tony Decker. Oh yeah, I, yeah. Tony Decker. I've known Tony for years. I, I remember getting. I met him down in Delaware when I went down there yep. to get certified with the USA. I think he's at Velocity or something now, right? Huh? Isn't he at Velocity or something now? No, well, you know he jumped like a lot of guys did out. And, yeah. And, and then he went back. I think he went back to uh, Temple. For okay. A while, and then the coaching changed there. And, yeah, he's down in the Philadelphia. And his wife's down there with. Me. They, they, she works with I think with the Eagles. Or, and okay, as a personal business. But Tony told me one time. He says, you know, what you know. He says, what does this mean, man? He says, a mile deep and an inch wide. <laughs> you heard that right? Yeah. And in 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 you know, to me, I never heard it before, and, and it always stuck with me. You, know? you don't know. You don't have to be a Renaissance man. What you know, you better know. No question. Know everything, you know, as much about it as you can. I, I couldn't that, agree more. That's, 
you know, smooth the professional development. The time in the weight room as, a, as an athlete, your time as a coach, I mean, I, as much as you can do, do. I mean, uh, to me, I would. I, do, I don't want to be on a football field coaching anymore, and I don't want to be here and there. But, I, I, you know, as a young guy, I think it's a good place to get started. Mm-hmm. Because you 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 got to understand, you're developing people in the way to put them on a playing surface. You have to understand something about that playing surface. I right agree. There. I mean, and, and you know, oh my, I mean, I, I understood this. Hey, I don't know. I've never played. I was never a basketball player. So when we go out and we start doing certain movement drills and stuff, I'm not coaching basketball. Right. I'm coaching movement, general movement type stuff. And when we get to this basketball specific, I want, they need to pick up what they've been coached to do, you know what I'm saying, or I could mess them up, how many, you do a lateral movement with an offensive line, you mm-hmm. don't know what system they're running, so you don't know what the pad level should be, you right. don't know, I mean, there's just so many different ways to move laterally, or, Right. so, so but I think the more that you've been involved with as a player, different sports, and then you can take that into the weight room with you, and I think that that helps make you a better coach too. Oh, I couldn't agree. So. I couldn't agree more. No, that's a great one. I'm gonna use that one for sure. <laughs> what about a uh, what about a a question? You know, when you're interviewing your interns, who basically almost full time employees, you know, what what's a question that you that you ask that you feel kind of gets to the root of who they are? It's a trick question. I'd, I'd say what what what, what is the best uh, when you when you're setting up the program? What's your, what's your philosophy? What's the best way to set up a program as far as uh, what do you believe in? Mm. You know? And I think the trick is that you know the last thing I want to hear is this is the only way to do it. Yeah, you know because <laughs> it, come on, we live in a world. If I'm a weightlifter, if I'm a powerlifter, yep. If I'm a if I'm a function, I mean high intent. Oh my good, I mean. Right. That's all. It's my way is the only way, and I think you got to learn that. I mean, if, if, if I make my living on the platforms, it's still pretty good for me to know a little bit about what high intensity is. No or question. A, a power lifting or west side or what this or that. I think you need to have all that knowledge, and you need to sort of maybe integrate it properly. You know, because there's a place for everything. Agreed. I mean, and, yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, so. I think, uh, you, you, yeah, if not, you're not going to be in the profession very long, that's for sure. Yeah. You, you know. What about uh, a book, app, or website recommendation, and or? And or? Yeah, give me uh, one of each if you got one. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm pretty weak there. I'm pretty weak there. I think I think the last thing I did, and I still have it down there because the last intern I had was, it, it's funny I picked it up, I have, probably have First edition, second edition. I got the third edition of the, of the NSCA manual, mm-hmm. and I still go over that. And I, you know, I still I still look that stuff over. You know, you get out of the classroom so much, you develop your own language. I mean, not my own language, but you know, sure. coaching language. But it's uh, you know, it's it's nice to go back and just you know get the basics of that right there. So uh, that's a good book. That's a good book. Absolutely, that's why it's a guideline to for the uh, certification. No question. No question. Well, buddy, this has been fun, man. It's been fun getting a chance to get to know you a little bit, and and uh, I, I'm I'm definitely going to get up there. Tell tell us, you know, if, if when's the when's the clinic typically, and and what how do people find out more information about it? Well, we we try to get it out. You know, the, the big thing about anything you have is is getting out there, marketing, and, get it, and and that's a tough thing to do. But we uh, we send it get, get hold of Junior out of college, and get on our our athletic website and I'll put you to camps and conferences and that but we we, we, we we like everyone else we go through mailing addresses with the BOC and, and we send out uh, uh, email addresses with the with BOC and ATA and then we go ahead and we go with uh, NSCA right now and we, we they're real good they uh, they send out the mailers and stuff we send out flyer, flyers like that it's, it's generally it's in the first it's usually the second or third week of, of June right know? And we try to make it where we don't conflict with, it, with other, you know, other things going on and everything. But we have it where we have the campus to ourselves because, like I said, we, we come in here, we, we feed them. By the time you get out of here, you're probably tired of eating, but we have a barbecue and a cookout and a big party on Friday night. We, that, that, you know, we 
prior to that, we have a we have a uh, we feed and lunch. Uh, we feed them breakfast. We feed them lunch the next day. There's a lot of you know we feed them. We put them up in air conditioned you know rooms. I mean we we, we make it really make it really nice. We have a big tent out here. We some of them get the live music going. And we're doing that. We uh, we end up with our last our last demonstration out here. Our hands on, and we got to crank up the music. And uh, we have some beverages out there, and uh, barbecue, <laughs> and uh, probably we get some strong men competition going. We use some strong men competition, and we make a lot of fun. Yeah, that's fun. awesome. That's so. awesome. Well, that's 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 great, buddy. Well, buddy, I appreciate it, man. I know everybody else does as well, and and uh, you know we'll. Uh, We'll definitely get together at one of these conferences and and uh, and talk some more shop for sure. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna count on that, man. I Thanks a lot. It. Hey, listen, it's been an honor to get on here. I, you know, I've, I've always I'm always hearing about you and seeing your face and everything. I, it's really <laughs> a privilege to be get yeah get the opportunity to talk to you. It really is. It's well, big. face for radio, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I appreciate it, buddy. Thanks so much. Take care. Hey, thank you. That's it for this episode of Iron Game Chop Talk. Thanks to this week's guest as well as our sponsors for bringing this episode to you for free. Make sure to check out ronmckeefree.com where you can join our mailing list, find the show notes, including all the links and resources mentioned, and information about Coach McKeefree's other products. While you are there, please join Coach McKeefree in the comments section thanking our guest for sharing. If you haven't subscribed to Iron Game Chalk Talk on YouTube or iTunes yet, make sure to do so. Comments, ratings, and reviews are always welcome. Coach McKeefree can be found on Twitter at rmckeefree, on Facebook and YouTube at forward slash ron.mckeefree. That's it for this week. Be sure to check back next week for another great episode of Iron Game Chalk Talk.